decade of Del Marva life, and boy, have we learned a lot over the last 10 years. For instance, did you know Del Marva has a curling club? We didn't know until a few years ago. So today, we're taking you back in Monday Memories. You're looking at a sport that's been around for more than 470 years. And while it's advanced over the centuries, the concept of curling has remained relatively the same. It was originally formed, uh, developed and played in Scotland, out on the rivers and the lakes uh, in the wintertime when the ice froze. Matt O'Shea has been curling now for the last four years. He's also a member of the Chesapeake Curling Club out of Easton. It's a game that can be played for a lifetime. It's a game that can be played by people of all skill levels, including, as you'll see here today, um, people who have to deliver using a stick because they can no longer deliver in the traditional way for whatever reason, whether it's a physical or age-related. Curling is a sport that is played by all ages. We, we can have kids, young, young children, up to, I think our oldest member is 78 years old, and he's just been curling for a couple of years. Gene Henkel, also a member of the curling club, has been playing this sport for 30 years. In fact, she says people often don't give curling the credit it deserves. Well, you know, and, and people do make fun of it because they don't understand the game. They look at that and it's like, it's sort of like people make fun of golf. It's like, what's golf? You're just hitting a ball from point A to point B and so forth. So they look at curling as kind of the same thing. Oh, that's a stupid game. But until you understand the game, the strategy of it, the finesse of it, that's the feeling you're going to have. But once you get to the point where you understand the game, then it changes. So what exactly is curling all about? Curling is a team sport um, that involves four players on each team um, throwing rocks or stones and the object is to have your rocks land and stay closest to the center of the rings which are called the house and the center is called the button. You'll probably notice each team has a color. In this case, it's red or blue. Matt says scoring is based on which color ends up closest to the center of the ring. So why do they call it curling? As the rock travels down the ice, it naturally curls to the left or to the right. Players also give the handle a little twist, which directs the stone where you want it to go. It's social, it's strategic, it's, it just encompasses a lot of different aspects. The Chesapeake Curling Club was kind enough to gather many of its members and show me how the game is played. It all happens right on their own rink inside the Talbot County Community Center. And speaking of which, I quickly learned that true curling ice is different from the one used for skating. This rink has been specially prepared. We have precision scraping equipment to scrape our ice absolutely flat and smooth. And then we come back with a um, backpack with a hose attached and a head at the end and we do what's called pebbling the ice. And that gives the ice the texture that you see. That texture allows for the rock to travel along it because the bottom of the rock is concave. If the rock, if the ice were completely smooth and flat, the rock would suck down to the ice and stop. The pebble allows the rock to continue to travel. After watching how it was all done, I figured it was time for me to give it a try. First up, learning how to release the stone. What you want to do is you want to press forward a little bit, get the stone moving, and as you press the stone forward, slide this foot forward. I'll admit it's a lot to take in at once. You have to coordinate so many parts of your body and use them at the same time. Here goes nothing. That was horrendous. I did it several times using a stabilizer and another rock to help with my balance. Bye. There you go, better, let go of the right. To be honest, it was a lot harder than I thought it would be, but apparently I'm not the first person to think that. They look at it and they think, oh, this is gonna be, oh, that's easy, well, I can do that, that's no problem. How hard is it to slide a stone down the ice? Till they get out there and then they realize, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> All right. Now it's time to see what it's like to sweep. The sweeping is done to polish the ice just in front of the rock and that allows the rock to travel farther or straighter before it curls. So we're gonna sweep in front of the rock 
right across the face like this. And I kind of stay right in front of you. That's correct. First, Matt and I did a practice run so I could get a feel for it. I can already tell this is much easier than releasing the rock. Then it was time for the real deal, sweeping in front of a rock that's going full speed. Not bad for my first time out on the rink with a rock and a broom. Then again, I had quite a bit of talent to look at beforehand. Brian Spiros reporting there. By the yeah. way, you know, I know people like to get an update on where they are now. Right, Brian right. back up in Connecticut with his wife and two children. So good to hear from him. We do miss him. Mm -hmm. We do miss him.